running back 24, Javante Williams, a player coming off a pretty significant knee injury, but he finds himself on a Denver team with a new head coach in Sean Payton. I'm going to start this one with you, Tyler, with Javante Williams. Are you feeling good for him about 2023? I don't know if I'm feeling good. Um, I have met 25, so I'm right there. Both of our JWB consensus and my 25 is a bit above generally ECR um, right there, like at ADP. So he's a guy that I've taken some shots on. I think you just got to look at the situation. And there's just the, the range of outcomes with Javante is so wide. I mean, it's a crazy knee injury. It's not just an ACL. He tore a bunch of things. I'm, I don't want to, you know, he's tore like three things like MCL or PCL or LCL. There's a bunch of things wrong with his knee. Not exactly a clean comeback from that. Um, the Broncos were terrible last year. New coach this year and Sean Payton. You know, there's just a lot of ways that this offense can look, and I think there's a lot of uncertainties. I think if you look back last year, we had Javante. People were pegging him as like a top five, the top eight guy. So, like, I find myself taking some shots in that range just because I'm a little bit above ADP. I'm, I'm happy to grab him when he slides to that RB24, RB25, because I do believe there is upside there. But, again, I think the range of outcomes is quite wide. I feel good because there's not a lot behind him at this point in time. Like, I know Samaj P. Ryan is a pretty serviceable pass catching back, but I don't think by any means that he is like a guy that is going to handle a serious workload so without them signing anybody there's no rumors about them bringing anybody in it doesn't seem like they're going to bring anybody in so I think they're at least a little bit bullish on his timeline and playing most of the season so basically like I'm right on line with with where we have Javante Williams I think he's definitely worth some shots especially if you're looking for some upside late like he's kind of like an end of a tier like right after Javante goes there's not a ton of upside left in my opinion so I do find myself interested in him but at the same time I just think the range of outcomes in which he can finish is is pretty wide considering this you know how serious the knee injury was and the new coach we don't know what the offense is going to look like so you know that's about what I have to say on that where I just I find myself like mildly interested I'll take him if he dips yeah, Tim, um, he's the running back 28 coming off the board. This is player 73. Are you in step with Tyler here that is kind of the last of that group? Or how have you been approaching him in drafts this year? And are you in or not? So I'll, I, I'm will i higher than than our group, the, like the most of our group on Javante. And I'll give you some reasons why. Is that for me, a lot of the, the running backs that when you enter towards the back end of the top 10, even like towards the, you know, the middle teens, I don't think a lot of them offer as much security and upside as people think they do. And for me, we have a couple uh, benefits to the, the injury for Javante being so early in the in the offseason or in the season where he had more than just the offseason to recover, as well as when he was playing. OK, so there was always the idea that he was splitting with Melvin. And then last year, he really was the engine of that offense. That offense really saw success when he was the one that was kind of the the uh, the locomotive behind it until he got hurt early in the season. So I think that we're going to see a lot more of that coming back as well as I really like Sean Payton being the, the head coach because I've already liked the way that Javante Williams handles the ball in the passing game. And if we have any sort of um, Sean Payton of old, when it comes to passing the running back, I think he's going to be a pretty heavy producer in that area. So really, will just depend on if Wilson's able to deliver the ball to him in those scenarios. But I don't think that he has far to go to to be producing in that sort of range, where it's like outlandish that he does so. So for me, I'd rather have Javante over a lot of guys, especially when it comes to if he's healthy, the clarity of his of his role and his position. I'm going to take him and I'm going to run with it. But where I have him ranked, I don't have to take him that high. I just know how high I am personally on him. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I've been telling people off season, you know, we, we have a very healthy sample size here with Sean Payton. And since 2011, every single offense he's had with these running backs, they've seen over 20% of the team's overall targets, which is a few percentage points, two to three over league average, which basically tells me this room, if it's Sean Payton, it's going to see 100 targets. Where is it going to go? And if you're out on Javante Williams, you really should be taking that late stab, pass a pick 100 on a Samaji P. Ryan, a guy who could just simply, of course, maybe not the ceiling, but fill that flex spot or that RB2 spot really nice. With Javante Williams, when you get him in the 70s, I don't feel like I'm missing out on a whole lot when I take him. Um, and in a lot of instances, you grab him as your running back three. Right. And this, this is a guy who I think has a route, if healthy, to the top 24. And if he busts out, Listen, I'm not I'm not going to be heartbroken. It's not like last year we were spending a third round, second round pick, and the ACL absolutely crushes you. So 